All right, guys, so in this lesson, I'm going to be covering the balance sheet more in detail. Uh, there's three financial statements or three documents that I think that, well, you do need to really understand when you get into investing, even as a business owner, and that's the income statement, the cash flow statement, and in this case, the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the statement of balances. Any cash on hand, all the assets, liabilities that a company has, marketable securities, which marketable securities um, are short-term bonds or treasury bonds that companies uh, like to invest in to pay off other debts and whatnot. But anyways, that balance sheet is probably one of the most vital documents that any investor actually needs to understand. So in this lesson, I'm going to be giving you a cheat sheet and an actual Microsoft document or, or Excel document that you can go in and plug in numbers and whatnot. But this is this template will be provided to you. I'll give the link in the comment or in the video. Um, or in the course, wherever you may find this video, it will be provided to you. So let's take a look at the, the Microsoft sheet real quick um, on the Excel document. And as, as I always said, there's six things that I always need to know or I want to know in a company, and that's the share price, the shares outstanding, market cap, cash, and debt, and also the enterprise value. The market cap and enterprise value, the market cap is the share price times the shares outstanding. So how many shares the company is divided into or that are offered to the public, that gives you the market cap, the overall value of the company. Now, the enterprise value, anytime a company is to, to buy out or acquire another company, it takes on its cash and its liabilities, so or its debt. So any loans and whatnot, they, you, you acquire those. So if a business owner or a business was to go and buy another business, they take in all the cash into the, in, in, they acquire that, but they also take in all the debt. So you have to kind of, you, you take the minus the cash, which will pay off some of the debt, and you're taking on debt will give you the enterprise value. So as you can see, I did provide you notes in this template, the market cap minus cash plus debt. So let's dive into Apple. And the best website to use is the sec.gov website. And right here, you will go to company filings. And for Apple, its ticker symbol is AAPL. And you'll want to scroll down and, and see the 10Q right here, which is the most recent quarterly report and also um, within January 30th. Right here, the SEC 13s are any ownerships or, or yeah, beneficial ownership by individuals over 5%, and they have to be listed and filed with the SEC. So those can be found here. The 8Ks are any events coming out. The company has to also provide the public with that. Um, so for this case, we want to dive into the 10Q. And right here, you can see there's multiple files available, but the 10Q is what we'll click on. And every, every uh, balance uh, 10Q, you'll see the company name, 10Q, and also a little bit down below. It's not always in the middle. Sometimes it's off to the side, but this is the shares of common stock available within Apple. As you can see, it's 4,715,280,000 shares issued as of January 18, 2019. So we'll, we'll take in 4,715,000. $4, and remember, on, on balance sheets or, or on these financial statements, you'll notice that there's only um, let me scroll down here and show you. There's only th this listed. That's not 73,000. That's 73 billion. And why? Because it says right here in millions, except the number of shares which are reflected in thousands and per share amounts. So technically, the best way to remember that is just plug in six zeros or think in the back of your mind there's six zeros before these numbers. Um, so that you just have to keep that in mind. And, and why they do that is just to clean up or, or keep these sheets clean and not filled with so many numbers. So anyways, scroll back up here and for this case we have to keep the 4715 and that's it. And the share price, how we find that, there's multiple websites you can do so, Yahoo Finance, MSN, but there's one that I use and it's called Guru Focus. It's phenomenal because it gives every single thing that you can think of all on one website. It provides values um, without ever even doing the math yourself or calculations 
but I like to show you how to do calculations and also know how to formulate those numbers and, and how they're generated. But, f but this website gives all kinds of things, whether it's screeners, the, the, the numbers, the finances, and I am an affiliate, I'll provide that link. So I do kind of earn uh, a commission anytime any, anyone joins this uh, software or website. It's around $400 a year. It's well worth it. It saves a ton amount of time uh, by looking up certain um, stock information and whatnot. So just remember, Guru Focus is, is the, one of the best ones to use. So we'll type in Apple's ticker, which is AAPL. And as we can see, the stock price is 170 it gives five star rate or uh, out of a rating of five stars shows its predictability rank uh, guru trades 30-year financials analysis discounted cash flow interactive charts all, and and then here's all the numbers that you need to know and right here we see price or, or yeah price to book value ratio being a 6.84 if you take a look at the microsoft or, or the excel document here it's well above our cheat sheet and you know the margin of safety is very very poor so with pe remember that pe times 1.5 the the 22.5 times or the 22 times 1.5 was that magical number um actually i stand corrected uh the the pe and then you'll see the uh, margin of or your 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 percent percentage of returns here if it's a pe of 25 you'll have a four percent return if it's a pe of 20 you'll have a five percent return and then over here is the price to book value if it's a five it's a 20 percent uh, margin of safety if it's a two it's a 50 percent 1.5 is 67 percent and so on one being 100 percent and here is probably has more cash on hand so you're you're way better than 100 percent you're actually buying a company to gain some cash on hand. So anyways, over here, we knew from Guru Focus, the stock price was last at 170. And we'll just do 170 just to, to keep it clean. Um, market cap is the share price times shares outstanding. And we can see it's 801 billion. Uh, the cash is cash equivalents and long-term and short-term marketable securities. The debt is commercial paper and current and non-current debt. That's it. There's three things for the cash and there's three things for the commercial paper that I like to tie in to find the enterprise value. And how you find the enterprise value, remember you take the market cap minus the cash plus the debt. So we'll figure out the cash, how much cash Apple has on hand, and we'll go over back over, we'll go back to the SEC website and we'll scroll down to the financial statements. The first one being the, the statement of operations. That's not the one I need. Statements of comprehensive income, that's not the one I need. Oh, right here it is, the condensed consolidated balance sheets. As we can see, there's assets and liabilities and shareholders equity. Now remember, book value is shareholders equity or equity, and that is right here. Think of equity when it, when it comes to real estate or buying a home, paying off some of that, that um, the, the expense or the home, the mortgage and then the balance in between is your equity so if you have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house you've paid fifty thousand dollars off and now you only owe two hundred thousand you have to take the 250 subtract the two hundred thousand and you have fifty thousand dollars worth of equity that you can use for whatever a lot of people they like to use the, that money for, to pay off other loans but smart investors usually take that equity and invest into another home or another uh, rental property or whatever the case may be real estate so within the the stock market we use equity to determine how safe your investment is for a company if it was to liquidate turn all of its assets into cash and pay off liabilities whatever is left over would obviously be the equity and that's how safe and the the value of the company is compared to um the margin of safety or what your your how safe your investment is so just remember that so we want to look at the cash and cash equivalents which is 44 billion 771 million want to plug that in and 
And we also want to take in the long-term and short-term marketable securities. Marketable securities are usually down here, I provided the, the cheat sheet or in the cheat sheet, short-term bonds, treasury bonds. So if companies are investing in such things, they're gaining on a small percentage back on interest and all of that. And, and they're making an, an extra income. So that's why I count it as cash. And remember, the balance sheet is the order of liquidity. So if it's, it's cash is liquid, so that's obviously going to be first. And then marketable securities, and then the list goes on and on to, to non-liquid. So goodwill is your brand value. It's an intangible product. It's just assumed that said, uh, if you take in some of its debt, that's what the brand value is. A lot of companies just put that in there. It's an estimated factor. It's nothing hardcore or set in stone. So just remember that too. So we take the cash and cash equivalents. And now we're looking at the, the marketable securities and we see that Apple has 41,656. And non-current, which is, remember, current is anything within a 12-month period. Non-current is after the 12-month period. So that's 158,608. So there's 245 billion worth of cash that Apple has, and its debt is commercial paper. Commercial paper, 11 billion 969 million. And we're looking for term debt and non-current which is 9 billion 772 million and then non-current is 92 billion 989 million gives us 114 billion 730 million gives us an enterprise value of, so we will take the market cap minus the cash plus the debt gives us 671245000000 So that's the actual takeover price per se. If a company was to try to acquire Apple, they would have to pay uh, six hundred, or the, the around the estimated price would be six hundred or six hundred and seventy-one billion dollars. So now we want to look at the book value and understand that portion. So the assets is the total assets, which is three hundred seventy-three, as you can see. It, it adds up the total current and total non-current, and it gives you right here the 373, 719 million. And then you'll deduct the total liabilities of 255,827. And without doing the math, you can actually just go down here and it gives you the, that sum, which is 117,892 million. So just let, let's do the, the math anyways, and we'll do, Three seven three seven one nine, and its liabilities is two fifty five eight twenty seven, and we'll subtract minus, and that should give us the one seventeen eight ninety two right here. So to find the price of the book 
ratio, you'll take the book value, which is the 117 divided by the shares outstanding. So remember, you want to break everything down by one share. So that's why you will take the number of shares outstanding. So we'll take the divided by the shares outstanding gives us 25, yes, 25. And then we'll take the sum, the 25 here, because we want to know what's that compared to the share price. We'll take the share price, divide that by the 25, and it gives us the 6.799. Now, as you can see over here on Guru Focus, the price of the book uh, ratio is 6.84. It's very similar. It's probably because of the 42 cents. Um, but you also, when you click on the numbers here, it will show you all the information that I just gave you on a, on a basis where you can actually understand it. You can go in and as we can see, uh, as of December 18th, the book value was 2493 and the price of the book ratio is 6.84. So that's how you get those two numbers. All right, so as you can see, everything is given to you, the current assets, the cash and cash equivalences and what they mean. The cash equivalents are cash on hand, marketable securities are short-term bonds, treasury bonds, net 30, 45, 60. Usually companies get discounts for paying early, so if they're set up on a net 45 or net 60 and they go ahead and pay within 30 days, they get a discount on their products or, or um, if they wish to, the, to be set up on net 30, there's usually a discount. Sorry about that. Um, and so accounts receivable is Apple will offer the inventory to, say, AT&T, Verizon, or whatever storefronts there are for the, to hold their Apple products. And then in 30 days, then those stores will start paying Apple. So that's why that is, that's what the accounts receivable is. Inventories are actual inventory, raw materials, finished product that's yet to be sold. Those show up on the assets, uh, vendor non-trade receivables or wage advances, loans owed to the company, insurance claims, et cetera. Other claim assets are subscription-based products that customers have prepaid, and then they still need to send those off. Goodwill, like I said, is the brand value per se. It's intangible. And then you have non-current assets, which are anything over the 12-month period, PP&E, property, plant, equipment, anything that's useful within the 12 months, um, say chairs, the land, the property buildings, the office items, whatever you, you that, that is under property, plant, equipment, that goes there. Um, and then you have other non-current assets. Then under liabilities, you have accounts payable. Those are the option. That's what Apple pays um, other people, like paychecks, the rent for the building or mortgage um, for those property and plants, the uh, other current liabilities, accrued expenses, expenses that have to be paid to run the business whole amount over the time, contracts. So if they're, um, let's say, athletes or whatever to promote the brand. Those are the entire contract, and then those contracts have to be broken down on a um, the, the contract basis. So every month they have to be broken down um, as well. So just remember that. Deferred revenue is cash up front, then half to deliver the product, like gift cards um, and subscription-based products as well that has been invoiced. So remember, not yet invoiced is is that's the key. Commercial paper, unsecured short-term debt issued to finance accounts payable or inventories and meet short-term liabilities. So commercial paper is used to pay off short-term loans and debt. And then term debt is loan with set amount of payment schedules, typically fixed interest rates. And then the same thing with non-current is anything over the 12 month period. So I hope this helps. Uh, there's and just just remember the the three vital pieces of paper or documents that you have to understand when it comes to investing and even running a business: the cash flow, the the balance sheet, and the income statement. So those three things are vital when it comes to those areas. Um, so. Here's the document, I'll provide this in a link. So I hope this lesson helps you understand more about the, about the balance sheet. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to reach out for me. Uh, reach out to me, uh, check the website, uh, Chris, uh, investingwithchris.com, email me, contact me, call me, whatever the case may be. I'll be, I'll be glad to answer your questions. So I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next lesson.